Who knows what lurks beneath the quiet facade of a normal suburban street? This week, the salvage squad descend on Stockport, where, believe it or not, behind this garage door is an historic flying machine. This is the house of Roger Light. He's a gardener by trade, but he bought this house because it was right under the flight path to Manchester Airport. Perfect for his other favourite hobby, plane spotting. And when he's not potting plants or spotting planes, you'll find him working on his dream, a museum dedicated to the motorbike of the aviation world, the gyroplane. They're a rare beast, and if you've ever seen one before, it was probably in the 1967 Bond film, You Only Live Twice, when 007 wiped out Blofeld's helicopters in a gyroplane called Little Nelly. But Bond's gyroplane wasn't just some piece of kit dreamt up by Q. And to prove it, Roger's got five of them, all lying in pieces in his loft and garage. And it's one of those the salvage squad have come to get flying again. But if they do, it won't be Roger at the controls. But surely, if you're into aviation, the best part of it is the actual flying, and you would have this strong urge to fly. I love aviation, but I'm not a lover of flying. You're Any not. sort of flying. I mean, you, you want it put back together so you can fly it. Love to see it flying again. As okay. I say, 13 years on, get it back up there. Pride of place in Roger's collection is this gyroplane. She's named after the last two letters of her registration, VK. As part of a British Airways display team, she attended nearly 200 air shows, like this one at RAF Abingdon in 1981. It's 13 years since she last flew. But the squad already have her booked in for her next appearance. In two weeks' time, they hope she'll take her place amongst the Spitfires and Hurricanes at the Duxford Air Display in Cambridgeshire. Like all modern gyroplanes, VK consists of a simple go-kart-like frame onto which all the other parts are bolted. Two rotor blades provide the lift, but surprisingly, they're not powered by the engine. Instead, they spin by themselves and reach speeds of up to 400 revolutions per minute. The engine is there to power the propeller, which drives the gyroplane forward just like an ordinary plane. They're almost forgotten now, but gyroplanes date right back to the early days of flight. They were for a while the most manoeuvrable aircraft in the sky, and gyro pilots love to show off their skills. Taking part in horse races and even landing on the White House lawn decades before the first helicopter. But if VK is even going to take off, she needs a major makeover. So the squad are taking her to Wallingford in Oxfordshire to the workshops of the man who designed and built her almost 30 years ago, Peter Lovegrove. Hi, Pete. Hello there, Lee. How are you going, mate? I'm not too bad. What, what have you there? You haven't got a gyrocopter for my propeller, have you? No. Did the ground jump up and hit it? It looks that way, doesn't it? Yes, yes. We've been up to Stockport. Well, somebody has to. Somebody's somebody has got to do it. We've been up there and we, we found a, a sad-looking gyrocopter, which we believe may have some connection with you. Yeah. This is the propeller, as you well know. And as you've just rightly pointed out, it's not in the best of state. And we've actually got the gyrocopter outside. In a better thought, state, I hope. Just a sec. Peter is a brilliant engineer, and he has to be. Do you want to wheel it in? VK might look like a go-kart, but underneath that eccentric exterior is an airplane. Anything goes wrong and it drops out of the sky. It has to be rebuilt to the same standards as a commercial airliner. This is going to be a tough learning curve for the squad and some tasks may simply be beyond them. What do you think? Well, superficially... Super, that's a good word. Good very word. superficially, it looks right. I know, but can I just... I, I've but got... could I just say that, the, you know, in broad terms, the Thames is about half a mile down that way. If yeah. you could wheel it down and chuck it in, chuck you it. might have an easy <laughs> job. But, Fair enough. But no, we, I think we can use you know, quite a lot of it, yeah. VK looks like the gyroplane Peter designed 30 years ago, but appearances can be deceptive. She's actually a museum piece. That's nice, but scrap. Straight up. And as the squad begin to strip her down, Peter soon spots the real from the fake. Well, that, that again, we'll give that back. That, that's certainly usable. Yeah. It, it, that's definitely in the scrap heap. Stop it rolling. I don't think so. It's, it's not made correctly. You know where that goes? I know where that I'm goes. I'm not even going to ask you about control-wise. Natural fact. Oh. 
we can't, we, we might, might be able, to, be able to use them because they are quite nicely made. This is utterly wrong. It's not the right airplane. Let them take it away. Totally quickly. wrong. Here we go again. Look at the corrosion on there. Oh no. There's nothing there, is it? No. It's not correctly made. We, we can't use the mast. There's don't no way. The no way. We can use that. We can oh, use that. So if we take that one bolt out there, we can use the tail wheel. Oh, good, eh? How nice. So from there Excellent. to the front, we're yeah. scrapping. Yeah. This immense pile <laughs> over here, I don't know if you yeah. can see this, guys, but at the moment, this is our gyrocopter here. What a gyroplane. Gyroplane, I, I beg your pardon. It's, Gyrocopter's it's, an American trade Well, I didn't recognise it at that stage. <laughs> this, is a, this, is gyro, this is it. So we've got a bit of wire, a handful of metal, um, and all the wheels are a okay, wheel. four wheels. We may have three wheels in all. Should we just, should we just knock up a go-kart and call it a day? Gyroplane or gyrocopter, the squad have just two weeks to turn this pile of bits into a flying machine. To get her airborne, Claire is going to have to relearn the art of drilling. Axel will find that even laying a gyroplane's carpet is a job too far. And Jerry will almost cause a divorce. And it will all happen under the eagle eye of Peter Lovegrove, who will make sure their work is never less than perfect. While the squad get down to work, I'm off on my travels to find out a bit more about this strange aircraft. The only auto gyro I've ever seen is Little Nelly in the James Bond film, You Only Live Twice. So today I'm off to see the guy who not only flew it in the film, but actually invented it as well, Wing Commander Ken Wallace. Ken's 85 now and probably well past flying but I still wanted to make sure that what I'd seen in that Bond film when I was a kid was more than a model with a few strings attached. So, Ken, yeah? you've got little Nelly in here from little James Nelly Bond film. Quite a few of her sisters as well. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> have you got enough? No, there's always one more. <laughs> there's always room. How many have you got in here? There are 19 in here. 19? Of which 18 can be started up and flown. And this, this is little Nelly. This is little Nelly. See the yes. name there, 007. Yes. What sure. were your thoughts when you were asked to do that? I hadn't seen a Bond film at the time. Never. No, not at that, not at that time. But uh, and I rather resisted it, and he became more and more insistent. Ken's been designing and flying gyroplanes since the end of World War II, and has even knocked up a couple of two-seaters. Well, good. Let's try it out. Let me get behind you. Right. Well, it's not going to topple no. forward, is it? No. Are we all right for that. Right. Oh, get over. Get my leg there. Oh, so I put, I put my yeah, feet on that. Right. Put your feet on the, on the bar. Yep. That's it. Go. There we are. Oh, that's not too it's bad. Not that's too bad. Not, it's not a, at all. It's a, it's a motorbike, isn't it, with a <laughs> pillion passenger, really. So you couldn't have a sidecar, really. <laughs> <laughs> that would really throw it out. Bit tight here, aren't we? Yeah. And you, <laughs> I mean, I don't know you that no. well. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell what the passenger's thinking. <laughs> Actually, what this passenger was thinking was, I'll bet you 50 quid this thing can't really fly. So Ken set out to prove me wrong. of age, he was off the ground in about 20 foot, he's buzzed around like a teenager, he's unbelievable. I've always seen myself as a bit of a 007, and as soon as Ken was back on the ground, I was making all kinds of stupid promises for when the squad gets our gyroplane flying again. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal with you. <laughs> if we get it going, and if we get the right paperwork sorted out, you take yeah, me up uh, on my... On the 130 horse Rolls Royce engine we version. Do, do you want to do that? Yes. I'll make a deal with <laughs> okay. you. I'll do that on camera, so yeah. that I can't bottle out now. Yeah. Right, I'll go yeah. up with you. Okay. <laughs> Day two, and the squad are beginning to turn the 10 airworthy pieces of VK the gyroplane back into a flying machine. Claire is working with VK's original designer, Peter Lovegrove, to make a new keel the main member onto which all other pieces are to be bolted. This is what the restoration starts with. A piece of brand new material for the main member. Hard to think we're going to turn this into a flying machine. 
first, the metal will have to be drilled with dozens of holes to take all the other components. So uh, our first hole is 64 millimetres from the end. And as Claire's about to find out, when someone's life depends upon it, drilling becomes more than just a skill, it's a high art. VK's mainframe is made from ultralight aluminium. As a result, every nut and bolt has to fit precisely. That's fine, that's lovely. Right, undo okay. the vase. Now, we will take this across. Every man should have a vase. And put it over onto the uh, drill press. Now, faced with drilling this many holes, any normal person would whip out a quarter-inch drill bit and get on with it. But the problem is that a quarter-inch drill bit almost always results in a hole which is slightly off-centre and slightly bigger than a quarter of an inch. Not a problem when putting up shelves on a wall, but a big problem when it comes to putting planes up in the air. So Claire and Peter will drill each hole, not once, but four separate times. The other centre drill will pick up easily on that. First, they drill a tiny pilot hole right through the centre of the dot. This ensures that the next slightly larger hole is exactly centred on the original position. So we're just making the hole a tiny, tiny bit bigger before so we actually drill it. Then we, the before. drill will find it accurately, yeah. Go down. And whoops. You don't need to go right the way through. You see what it was, you just relaxed a bit, you got a bit casual, you see, and then it caught you out. Next, Claire uses a drill bit two thousandths of an inch smaller than the final size she wants the hole to be. Right, so this is it. This is You're the proper hole, drill. yeah? This is the hole prior to reaming, yeah. No, that's, no, that's not, right. not right. That drill's not, that's not correct. OK, that's it. Finally, the last bits of metal, no thicker than a human hair, are removed using a special drill called a reamer. If you, if you look, if you look inside there, you see the mark that the, the, the drill leaves. Yeah. And you'll see when we've reamed it, hopefully that will vanish. So you've got a nice, smooth, nice. polished surface. So to get the final hole, you have to mark out one pilot hole, slightly larger pilot hole, main drill, and, and then ream, ream it out. Yeah. So that's four operations. Yeah, that's why I say it takes... Well, we've only done one edge of two sides. We've got the other edge of this side and all of these today. It's going to be a late night, isn't it? <laughs> well... <laughs> the result is a hole that's as near to perfect as a human being can achieve. OK, that's it then. So we've done one edge of one pair of sides. I've only got that to do eight times over. So I'll speed up. You, you can speed up and you know, that can help you then. So it's taken Peter and the squad two whole days to make the parts for VK's frame, but at last they're ready to bolt them together. Every nut and bolt is crucial, and Peter won't let the squad do anything unless he's watching. Not something they're used to. That's it, That's it. No, not those, no, just the two middle ones. Just the two middle ones, oh. and stop the minute it cracks. There, yeah. It's the type of assembly job they'd normally do in their stride. You're not looking. <laughs> Pay attention, <laughs> boy. But this is like going back to school, because by the time VK flies, Peter's determined to turn them into aeronautical engineers, whether they like it or not. No, no hammering too hard. At the end of day four, the squad have completed VK's main framework to Peter's exacting standards, and they take it off to a specialist for painting. Happy to be out of the hothouse, I wanted to find out more about the early days of the gyroplane. Whatever happened to the huge machines of the 20s and 30s, and why did they end up as little sports machines like VK? That's why I've ended up at the Helicopter Museum in Western Supermare to meet the curator, Elvan Apris, and look at the remains of one of the most famous gyroplanes of them all, the Sierra C-30A. Right, so Elvan, this is the granddaddy of them all. That's right. The Sierra C-30A. Mm -hmm. This looks slightly different from uh, 
what we've got here? Yes, um, the auto gyros in that period, and this is a model, um, were really built like the. I knew that was a model. I knew that day. was a model, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Unless, yeah. unless people back in the 30s and 40s were a lot smaller. <laughs> <laughs> this is an actual model of this one. Okay, fair enough. Well, they, they were built really exactly like. The aeroplanes of the day were built. It looks, um, it looks apart from like well, it's got no wings there, but the tail, for, the tail yeah. plane's bigger. But it looks exactly yeah. like a plane. That, that's right. Uh, canvas covered fuselage, engine in the front um, of the aircraft, of, yeah. of course turning. But the principle is exactly the same. Even though this one, our one, we've got the propeller behind. Yeah. The pilot. The inventor of the gyroplane was Juan de la Sierva a Spanish mathematician who originally invented the free-spinning rotors as a kind of parachute for a conventional airplane, allowing it to land almost vertically if anything went wrong. Although he never actually thought of powering his rotors, it was his work on the gyroplane that paved the way for the helicopter. Certainly the successful helicopters, as opposed to the, all the various funny attempts that went on, um, relied on some of the Sierra patents to make it work. Um, and really the basic difference was that, of course, the helicopter could actually stand still in the air yeah. um, and move backwards, which the autogyro couldn't do. It could almost stand still if there was a good headwind, right. um, but the helicopter was just that much more manoeuvrable. And that was really why, after the war, development of big autogyros stopped, but development of the small ones for people to build as kits developed out of that and became very popular. The problem with early helicopters was keeping them stable. But this was a problem that Sierra had solved over 15 years before. The key was in the rotor head, the bearing right in the middle between the two rotor blades. Early helicopter designers had simply bolted their rotors onto the rotor head. It was only when they adopted Sierra's design, which allowed each rotor to hinge a little where it joined the rotor head, did they end up with a stable aircraft. Assembling VK's complex rotor head is Jerry's next job, but he soon comes up against a problem. Okay. Peter, sorry, I'm just playing. That's yeah. obviously the bit for there. Yeah. What I do need, more importantly, that doesn't go. In, yeah, that doesn't go into last. Oh, 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 oh. What's that word I'm searching for? We have a problem. We have a problem. Houston or somebody. What's wrong, Jerry? That needs to travel. All the way around. That's yeah. supposed to come past that bolt. Yeah. Ah, right. And it don't. Ooh. Okay. Well, let's not cry over it. Problems are there to be solved. We're That's solved. right. Now, is this is this a problem with me or is this a problem? No, it's with... a problem with that. You know, I said to you I couldn't understand why I had that drawing. Yes. It's because that drawing is probably not the one that we finally used. That's an original which I changed later. In flight, VK's rotors don't need any power. But to start them turning, they have to be temporarily connected to the engine via this small cog. Once they're spinning fast enough, the engine is disconnected, leaving them to spin freely on their own. And it's the lever that disconnects the engine that's causing all the problems. Jerry persuades Peter that a bit of bodging is in order. He lobs off the end of the lever and subjects it to a bit of drilling and filing. Well, oh, it's either going to work or it's ruined. Yes! Pete? What do you reckon? Oh, I reckon, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's perfect, you say? Yeah, that's fine. Lovely job. Two hours later, and amazingly, Jerry's bodging passes Peter's inspection. Give yourself a pay rise. Thank you. While the boys are finishing off VK's frame and rotor head, Claire takes the powerful two-litre Volkswagen engine off to Henstridge in Somerset to be repaired by specialist mechanic Tony Melody. Hello. Hello, Claire. I'm pleased to meet you. I'm Tony. Pleased to see you. Well, you'll be seeing me, but wait till you see what's in the back of the car. Oh, I understand you've got an engine for me. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. <laughs> I recognise that. It's, it's an old friend of mine, this one. Henstridge Airfield is one of the few places you can learn to fly a gyroplane. 
What's more, Tony's a test pilot, well capable of teaching Claire the basics. Okay. Regardless of deadlines, she can't resist donning a crash helmet. That's it. There you Ready go. To go. You've never looked lovelier. Can we go now? Go on then. Tony's giving Claire a lesson in a gyro glider, a gyroplane attached to a car which pulls it through the air. 60, what are we looking for? Oh, as much as we can get. All they need is a bit of elbow grease to start the rotors turning, and they're soon reaching the critical speeds necessary for takeoff. Back on the ground, Claire and Tony have to get to work. Meanwhile, I'm on my travels again. I wanted to find someone who actually knew VK when she was in her prime. And who better than the man who flew her at 180 air shows, John Kitchen. Oh, it's a marvellous piece of kit, really is. And so manoeuvrable, that's the nice thing about the autogyro. Uh, you can really turn the thing on a sixpence, you can really flog it around the sky. Even though John's day job was captain in a tri-star for British Airways and he'd clocked up over 250 hours in VK, he was not immune from the dangers of flying. So I understand you had a little bit of a prang. I'd just flown in from Dharan uh, overnight and I was a bit tired and this was the big mistake. And the gremlins in aviation wait until you're <laughs> what, you know, not quite ready for them. John's engine failed, which on a gyroplane is usually no problem. VK should have descended gracefully on her free spinning rotors, stopping a few feet after touching the ground. But John was too low to take the appropriate action. And I literally fell out the sky. I just <laughs> I landed into the ground, bounced up in the air, the rotors hit the ground, they all flailed around. One of them broke off, I think, or perhaps two, I can't remember now, it doesn't matter. And all the bits sort of fell to the ground. And there I was just lying in the in the in the cockpit, thinking, yeah. what an idiot, having heard the the expense till go ding, ding several times. <laughs> so I, I unstrapped myself and, and get out. No problems at all, I wasn't, nothing wrong with me at all. Um, but it was quite impressive, I think. The yeah. crowd seemed to be quite pleased anyway. The next thing was that all the bells started ringing as the, the blood wagons and the fire brigade were all preparing. They were all having a good go, something to go <laughs> to, you see. They all come charging. So I said, for goodness sake, stop it, fellas. I tried to stop them, and I think I did. Yeah. And uh, so I made towards the crowd, and they all stood and looked at me as if I was a spook, you know. Absolute silence. <laughs> and I got in front of them and I said, I bet you enjoyed that lot, didn't you? Especially <laughs> the last part. They went, Wee! <laughs> Within a few months, VK and John were back in the air again and soon had a new sponsor. She continued to fly at the air shows until he sold her over 15 years ago. So when was the last time you saw VK flying? Flying? Oh, gosh. Well, I... Passed VK on back in 1985. 85, so we're looking like 15, 16 long time, years. Isn't it? Long time ago. Yeah. Because uh, to extend an invitation to you, now if we get VK flying again, would you like to come along and see if we can get her up in the sky? I can't promise that it's going to happen. You know, you can come along and at the very least you can look at it. I'd love to. But we'll Thanks try and get it out. The squad are beginning to turn the gyroplane back into a flying machine. I wanted to find someone who actually knew VK when she was in her prime. And who better than the man who flew her at 180 air shows, John Kitchen. The fact that John was able to walk away after crashing VK was no doubt due to Peter Lovegrove's painstaking approach to building her in the first place. Like any aeronautical engineer, when Peter designed VK, he specified the amount of twist, or torque, to be applied to each and every nut. That way, nothing would be damaged by being too tight or fall off by being too loose. Got a 70, you said, yeah? Uh, yeah, tops. To do this, Axel uses a tool called a torque wrench. 
It can be set to tighten a nut a precise amount and no more. Once the nut has been tightened, the wrench will click and Axel won't be able to tighten it any further. Three days to go before VK's first test flight and Claire brings back the engine. You're glad to hear the patient has made a full recovery. Good omen. The squad get cracking. First, they've got to fit the tailplane and the main controls. No good having this seizing up at a thousand feet. Then they have to fit a brand new pilot's pod. The pod is the main body of the gyroplane. It provides a mounting for the instruments and protection for the pilot. It's been made out of glass fibre by a specialist, but getting it on proves a bit fiddly. That's all right, I'm cool. The job of applying VK's registration letters to the pod is right up Jerry's street. As long as it works, don't care how you do it. It does work. Axel, can you give me a hand? These are hateful. When he's not working with the squad, he spends much of his time restoring and racing classic sports cars. And if there's a transfer or a paintbrush involved, then Jerry's your man. I'm going to use Peter's technique. Yeah, this is going to be a lot well, it's, got a, it's got a thicker, thicker backing back to what yeah, I'm back normally usually. used to. Yeah. OK. So... That's OK. Thank you. OK. Very nice, Jerry. It's not on yet. Did I break a bottle of champagne over <laughs> Axel's head or something, you know, where we're doing this? It seems sort of rather not dramatic. Quite. Not quite. That's a lovely job, Joe. You've just spot on. Yeah. Yay! Nice <laughs> one. Perfect. Even Peter's applauding. That's rather good. Do they always go on like that, Jerry? No. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, no. <clears throat> It does look good, though. A brief moment of victory in an otherwise taxing day. Buoyed up and raring to go, Jerry can now indulge his artistic side by painting up the pod. VK's appeared in a number of liveries over the years, but the one we're going for is the original paint job she had when she was made in 1974. And for that, a handlebar moustache worthy of any squadron leader needs to be applied. That is just stupid. The first job is to mark out the shape of the moustache with tape, which is when Jerry's individual approach to restoration becomes apparent. I don't actually reckon that's an improvement on the original. I'm going to leave that be. Could have a bit of Jerry styling in it, whether it darn well likes it or not. That's actually none too shoddy, Jerry. I'm tempted to say it's an improvement over the original, but throwing a can of paint at it would have been an improvement over the original. Obviously, a better aviator than he was a sign writer. True to form, Jerry's attempted to improve on the original, which doesn't go down too well with his more purist colleagues. It doesn't look nothing like what it's supposed to do on the can. Fine. Look, you've gone too deep here. That is too, that is too exaggerated. Yes, I know. That line's deliberate. far too exaggerated. Absolutely deliberate. Why? Because, in my humble opinion, that looks ridiculous and this will look half reasonable and it's a close enough approximation. I'm just saying, this is more than line, much. Yeah, it is. Here, right? There. Yeah, it is. It's much, much, I've got it much deeper. Jerry, you, you, you can't make those sort of decisions, like, by yourself. One. Two. Enjoy it. No, it's really no, good. No, have fun. Do, just enjoy it. No problem. Because I'm sure you'll do a much better job than I will. No, bye no, bye. It's not about bye. that. Bye. Good day. Well, Excel, nothing like the drawing. Excel, it's not about who's the better sign writer no, or being competitive. I'm not, yeah? even, I'm, not, I'm, not even saying, I'm not even saying I could do it better. I'm just saying it does look nothing like on the picture. 
But you, you understand the problem, don't you? Jerry thinks that his is a new and improved version. Well, we don't care yeah. about new and improved version. We want the original. End of story. Yeah. We didn't build a new and improved gyrocopter, did we? Nah. No. It might seem trivial, but the argument goes right to the heart of restoration. Make it how it was, or make it better. Jerry's vote is for better, but the others don't agree, and soon it's grounds for divorce. So, are you winning? No, we're still talking about it. Thank you. Well, look, having thought it over, yes. what about a compromise? There is no compromise. We've really got to stick with the original. Personally, I think that looks a lot better. But oh, this? Yes. Right, OK, that's your personal view. Personal view, right. But you want more of the moustache shape. Yeah, I don't particularly like that moustache shape. OK. Right? Mm, right. We're happy more or less with depth there. No, no, we're not. Well, why not use this? And we can mess up for 20 hours with this until we get it right. We'll just do line after line after line until it looks right. But one. if at the end of the day, if Joe's just going to do what he thinks is No, I won't do what best. I think. No, no, he yeah. said, he said he's he going to go with it. You're going to use the best of your ability to do this, the original design. I will do the, to this to the best of my ability, but... No, I'm it. sorry, Jerry. This is not good enough, yeah? This is not about you improving the design. No, 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 design. he's going to do right. No, he's going to do right. Keep out of this, yeah? This is not about Ooh. you putting a, a, a much better line on, because you think you know better. You end up with nothing, yeah? And this is not one of your cars at home that you can muck about with and improve the engine and all the rest of it. No, this but he's is supposed not to be... An original Jerry. restoration. Mm. If you can't do it as the original, then we stop He's and we find someone original. else to do it, OK? No, I'm going to do it as the original. I'm just going to... Just and that includes it. all lines? Yeah. Mm. All right. Finally, the shape of the moustache is agreed and everybody loves each other again. But they've wasted precious time. By now, they should have had the engine fitted. Instead, Jerry's left to paint on into the night by himself. Back at the helicopter museum, I'd uncovered an amazing chapter in the history of the gyroplane. Having inspired the helicopter, the gyroplane was gradually replaced by the more modern machine until it became not much more than James Bond's plaything. But before that, it had been a vital part of Britain's air defences in the Battle of Britain. You were saying about they had a, a military application. Mm -hmm. um, what did they do? Because I, I, I don't remember anything about them during the war. No. Um, well, in the very early days, they were actually used to try and spot for the guns, for instance, in the Battle of France. But after that, they actually had a very important role in the Battle of Britain. In the Battle of Britain? In the Battle of Britain. Are you sure? Because I've seen the films and I don't remember <laughs> seeing them. Ah, uh, well, you see, that was because it was all very hush-hush and top secret. Radar was our most important secret weapon of the war, and it turns out that the gyroplane was the key to making it work. It was central to our victory in the Battle of Britain, and it allowed us to detect incoming aircraft and guide our fighter planes towards them. But at the time, the gyroplane's involvement with radar was so secret that even today, few people know the story. Which is why I travelled to an old World War II gun emplacement above the Bristol Channel to meet squadron leader Basil Arkell, the last surviving pilot of the RAF's 529 gyroplane squadron. It was a very secret. We weren't allowed to say anything about it, even to other people in the RAF. You see, when radar first started, um, it wasn't very accurate. Um, it depended entirely on having these very sensitive aerials calibrated from a, from a known position and at known heights. The radar worked by firing a beam of radio waves at an incoming enemy plane and then recording its echo with a receiver. Using a bit of fancy maths, you can then work out exactly where the plane is and send a Spitfire up to deal with it. The problem was setting up the aerials in the first place so that they gave you accurate readings. For that, you needed to park an object in the sky at a known point and then tweak the system until it gave you the right answer. It would have been a perfect job for a helicopter, but in 1940, the only planes that came close to hovering were the gyroplanes of 529 Squadron, flown by men like Basil Arkell. We carried a special uh, responder device that the uh, radar controller 
could direct his aerials onto and get a signal back from. So, get this straight, so you go out to a point out at sea? Yes, what we used to do... Do you, do you actually just fly in a circle? Is that what you're saying, yes, very slowly? Yes, yes. We um, devised a method of what we used to call orbiting, and so that we could uh, control the machine in a, uh, a pattern which uh, held it virtually in one spot. Without Basil and the gyroplanes of 529 Squadron, it's a good bet that we'd have lost the Battle of Britain. But within four years, Basil was being retrained in the newfangled helicopters just in from America, and the age of the gyroplane was coming to an end. They'd done an incredible job during the war, and it was all, after that, it was all helicopters. It's now the final day of the restoration of VK to gyroplane, and the squad are working flat out to get her ready for a flight test tomorrow. There's the engine to go on. Jerry's rotor head. Most important, important part of the machine is... I know. Get this wrong, and we're shot. And when that's done, they'll have to stick down the carpet in the bottom of the pilot's pod. At last, a job anyone can do. Just a bit of sticky tape. Or is it? Come on, Claire, we can do it. Let's show this man yeah. we can do it. No wrinkles, straight line. Can I, can I borrow your snot rag, please? My what? Your snot rag. My snot rag? Right, here we go. I think, I think you're within a foul on that one. Yeah, all right, cool. Oh, Jesus! Oh, you do! Look at it! That's appalling! It's a bit it's going to be under the carpet. It's going to be under the carpet. I don't care. We, we don't put no, things under the carpet. Wait, you do it. You show us how it's done, mate. <laughs> oh, no, no. It's a piece of carpet. I don't care what it is. It is you know, a piece of tape. This is a... As far as anyone knows, no aircraft has ever crashed because the carpet fitter didn't get the sticky tape perfectly straight. But Peter's not a man to take chances, and 20 minutes later, VK's carpet is finally stuck to perfection. Right, that's it. That's not coming out. All she needs now is her instrument panel, and a bit of last-minute tweaking, and she'll be ready to fly. Here you go, chaps, I'm sure you'll need these. The next morning, with less than 24 hours to go before the Duxford Air Show, VK is wheeled out onto a lonely airfield to undergo her all-important test flight. Boat, up a bit more. At the controls, as she takes to the air for the first time in 13 years, is the man who rebuilt her engine, gyroplane test pilot Tony Melody. Only if he's completely happy with the squad's workmanship will he grant her a permit to fly. It's a tense moment as he begins his pre-flight checks. Yeah, Anything wrong, and VK won't be going to Duxford. Yeah. So? Uh, I'm very happy with that. It uh, all looks in good shape. I'm very pleased to hear that. Oh, so am I. That's all the work. <laughs> and you've got to tell the truth, haven't you? You're the pilot. Indeed, yes. It's yeah, your neck on the line, uh, Absolutely. Otherwise. Tony straps himself in. Time to fire up VK's engine. Mission on. Clear prop. <laughs> the engine sounds sweet. Now Tony checks her brakes and ground handling. Yep, steering's working. Rotor's rotating. He's got this pre-rotate push in. Yeah. That'll be interesting. Next, he engages the engine to spin up VK's rotors. Then nature takes over, and the rotors are now spinning freely at almost 400 RPM. Tony throttles up the engine for the first flight in 13 years. Oh, here we go. Aye, aye. Oh, is that That's noise? a noise, yeah. yeah. The front wheel lifts and VK is heading for the skies. <laughs> it's up! No, it's not. No, it's yes, not. It yes, it is! Yes, yes, yes! yes. yes. Look, Look at that! that. Pete, Pete, must be. Pete, Pete, Pete. Pete. Really are. See why I'm, I'm obsessed with Yes! That. Pete, yeah. you're the man. Yeah. Oh, no, just one of the men. <laughs> That's unbelievable. With the squad cheering it on, VK is soon climbing through 150 feet. But Tony has sensed the problem, and it looks like the squad celebrations might be premature.
As Tony touches down, the squad still don't realise there's a problem. Not we right want to see him circle this place. Yeah. One, a lap. Land. A lap. That is, that is a flight. A lap is a flight, isn't it? Yeah. It's flying. It is flying. But it hasn't definitely. made a flight. Aye, aye. Does he bring it in? Oh. 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 It's too good to be true. Oh, I wonder what's wrong. What's wrong? Uh, engine oil pressure's failing and the temperature's coming up as well. Right. Uh, it definitely uh, requires some attention. I think we have to call a halt to it at this stage. To push on will be tempting fate. Do you know what it could be down to? Uh, not really. I mean, the engine's got all new parts in, and in theory, it should be perfect. Oof. First thing to suspect is the gauge and go from there. Well, I suppose the gauge is the simplest thing. So it could be something as simple as a faulty gauge? Uh, it could indeed. Uh, let's hope it's something that would quite be nice. straightforward. That would be very nice, wouldn't it? It would indeed. So it's motor out, take it away, and you'll let us know how it gets on? Uh, indeed, we will, yes, yeah. We want regular bulletins from the hospital. All the squad can do is pack her up and head for home. The next day, dozens of historic aircraft begin to fly in for the Duxford Air Show, but sadly, VK's not among them. It wasn't a faulty oil gauge, and Tony's had to strip down the whole engine to replace a leaking seal. Worse still, it's a specially made part, and it would take at least two weeks to get a new one. Dozens of historic aircraft begin to fly in for the Duxford Air Show, but sadly, VK's not among them. Undaunted, the squad decide to hold their own air show two weeks later. VK is the only entrant, and the invited audience consists of her current owner, Roger Light, and the man who flew over 250 hours in her, Captain John Kitchen. I'll be honest with you, I expected it to be flying rather yeah. than being towed by it's a car. A, it's a start. <laughs> Good Lord. What do you think, Rog? Excellent. I recognise those wheels. It's marvellous. I've got to be honest with you, yeah. Rog, it, it does look the business now, because I'll be honest, when we first came and saw you, I thought it was a bit of a toy. It's a bit harsh. I, I know, but I'm, I'm truthful, if not a thing. toy? It looked like a toy, but a toy. now it looks like... Johnny, listen. The, no, I that's am. then. That's a load of old lip and dip. What's um, this toy business? A great flying machine. Leave it, John, you might be a pilot, but yeah. uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Talk us to the geezer now. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm saying then, it looked like, yeah. then it looked like a toy. Now it looks the business, because yeah. it's all together. We've oh, got the rotors pretty, on. It, it, it looks nice. Pretty. Excellent. Are you pleased with it, Rog? Excellent job, I must admit. I didn't think it'd be possible, but uh, looking at it, Somebody's put a lot of time in working. Yep. Yeah. It wasn't me. No. <laughs> I'm sure. John, honest opinion. Do you think the boys and girls have done a good job? Marvellous. Really nice. It's very pretty, isn't it? Well, don't you think it's pretty? I do. I do think it's much better than when we first found it, I have to admit. And if we can get Tony to make it work properly and show us how it really <laughs> flies, it's going to make my day. Thanks a lot. Excellent. Strapped in for the second time, Tony can only hope that VK's engine doesn't fail again. It's gonna work. No, it's not. Yes, it is. I guess it's gonna work. Come on, it's not gonna work. You think it's gonna work? Yeah. Yeah! No! Yeah, don't be too. False start there, Jerry. It's cold. It'll go. Oh, oh. It's cold like the rest of us. I know. Yeah. Try pulling out the choke. He's got his handbag hanging on. Oh, There she goes. Come on. 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 Tony, give it some bloody throttle. Yeah. Hey, yeah. give it yeah. some. Come <laughs> on. Oh, 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 come on. Oh, he's, go te on, he's teasing us now. Go come on, pop. Put on the throttle and then go. It's easy. Well done. Let's yeah. go. Yay. Yeah. Sounding like a lawnmower. If that bloke, if that bloke could just let go, he could take off. <laughs> oh. 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 Golf Alpha X-ray Victor Kilo. Nothing there to conflict. You are clear to take off. There you go. There you go. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Come on. That's a one point, different, a different one again. At point do we start panicking? No, He's coming really... No so skipping up. Oh, 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 there we go. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Good back! Yeah. That's the flight we were talking about. <laughs> That's what we want. Very nice, Tony. She's almost stopped in yeah. space, isn't he? Yeah. Now, put a power on, Tony. Come on. Good lad. Very nice. Power. X 
Okay, Victor Kilo, you're clear for landing, wind 26 degrees and 10 zero knots. Drop it in, good as goes. Oh. 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 Okay. Okay. Well done, that man. I'll even, I'll even remove my gloves to shake your hand. Yeah. Well played. Okay. Well Good played, day, man. <laughs> well, <excellent. laughs> yeah, Mark's statement. Go on, in your own time. Go on. <laughs> Yay! There he goes to the pilot first. Straight out of the box. Cheers. Cheers. Straight out of the box. <laughs> Cheers, sir. <laughs> Right then, uh, have you been drinking, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Can I see your licence? <laughs> but as the champagne corks were popping, there came the sound of another gyro landing. It yeah, was definitely. business, wasn't it? Well, now it's down. Wasn't there a bit of a premise that if this flew, you would fly in a two-seater? Well, yeah, but obviously this is a single-seater and we've just got... You know, I'm no pilot. There's no way I could go up in I this. I know, but... but um, we could have a little plan for you. Here's our man here. Oh, my God, it's Ken Wallace. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Ken. Nice to see yeah, you again, mate. Oh, my God, look over there! <laughs> <laughs> Are we <talking? laughs> Right, pull back on the stick, Lee! Pull back on the stick! After the break, pre-show nerves affect the bike building when the American chopper crew hits Hollywood. While over on Science Next, there's monster truck mayhem in Scrap Heap Challenge.